Queers in Quarantine. That was my alternative caption for today's podcast episode. We're also going to talk about should you call the police if you don't have any access to toilet paper? Um, We're going to talk about gun skyrocketing sales that have happened in this last week or more. We're going to talk about how New York City is very invested in your sex life during this time of coronavirus. And I'm going to share a bonus huge announcement. All that and more on this episode of Deconstructing the Culture. And I am your host, Elisa Steele. I want to be straight up with you. I hardcore resisted talking about coronavirus for quite a while when it first started making world news and then national news. And I just thought, okay, how much can you talk about this virus? And how much is it affecting people's day-to-day lives? At the time, it was very minimal impact. So that's why I spent so many weeks not talking about it. But now the world has brought us to such a place where coronavirus is everything. It's affecting everyone's lives almost completely worldwide. It's creating a change of life that all of us are having to face and navigate. And as part of that, I'm going to make your navigation of coronavirus as entertaining and as enlightening as I possibly can. So what you can expect of today's episode and even future episodes talking about coronavirus, I'm not going to give you the daily updated numbers of how many infected and how many survived and how, you know, you don't need those numbers from me. You can find those numbers. They're changing hourly or daily at the minimum. And they're going to be irrelevant. If I talk about them today, in two days, they'll be irrelevant. So instead, you can expect entertaining, culturally applicable information in this podcast. And yes, it will probably, in in much of it, pertain to coronavirus, because that's what our world is really kind of surrounding itself with right now. Not obviously voluntarily, but it's affecting us in, in large ways. So let's go ahead and pop right into this interesting coronavirus culturally exploring news episode, (laughs) okay? So let's go ahead and start with an experience I had this weekend. So a week ago, I went and I purchased a gun at a local, very reputable gun store where I live here in Florida. Now, I had been planning on purchasing a gun, uh, this specific gun, really, I'd been kind of, you know, it'd been on my list of to-do, right? And I was like, okay. And it was one of those things where I was like, I had a Sunday afternoon open. I think it was last Sunday. Yeah, pretty sure it was last Sunday. It was last weekend, Saturday or Sunday. And I was like, I'll go take care of this, right? This is before our world had thoroughly freaked out. At this time, people were just buying a lot of hand sanitizer. And I was like, no big deal. I didn't think much of it. I purchased a gun. I feel really good about um, the one that I picked out. I, you know, I sent pictures to my husband and He was just kind of like, get whatever you want, sweetheart. And so I went ahead and picked out something special for myself, right? And didn't think much of it. Here in Florida, there's a five business day waiting period um, unless you have your concealed carry permit, which I don't here. Um, I do want to get that eventually, but probably in the state of Utah because it's the most widely recognized one. So I'll probably get that sometime when I'm visiting in Utah. But that aside, I went, I got this gun. I thought, you know, I'll pick up some ammo for when I come to pick up the gun in a week, right? Well, that was a mistake because this weekend I went to go pick up the gun and my husband was available. So he's like, I'll go with you. We'll go, you know, pick it up together. We get there like maybe two minutes before the shop opens. There is a line, I kid you not, of like 50 plus people waiting, lined up outside of the gun shop doors. It was insane. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. Found out they'd closed the gun range. My husband, I had planned on going to the gun range. My husband was going to shoot our new gun. Um, That didn't happen. They closed the gun range altogether. Only the shop was open. And after about 30 minutes of waiting, I was like, you know, honey, both of us don't really need to be here. You have a long list of stuff to do. I have the day mostly open. Why don't you just go home and I'll wait in line? 
And of course he didn't want to do that. He was just like, no, I'm not going to leave you, but I convinced him to go. So, you know, he was a gentleman. He tried to stay. I said, no, honey, it's okay. I'm a big girl. I got this. Plus I make friends really easily. So I ended up making friends with like half a dozen people in line. And we were sharing like what guns we had and what guns we wanted to get and like kids. And, you know, the next thing you know, we're talking about Fortnite and random stuff that their kids are into or whatnot. So it was a great time. I thoroughly enjoy it because I'm an extrovert and I love to visit with people. It was no big deal for me. Um, but I am really glad I sent my husband home because I was in line for about two hours, two hours. And it was an insanely long wait. That's two hours after a ton of people dropped out of line in front of me and behind me. And the line kept going. When I left, when I finally got to the front of the line and was able to pick up the firearm I'd already purchased, like they weren't doing a separate line for purchases and then a separate line for pickups. Like I was just there to pick up and get some ammo. I get there, the ammo has increased astronomically. Like they raised ammo prices a lot. And I'm beating myself up over here like, why the heck didn't I get ammo last week when I was here when it was reasonably priced? So I ended up having to pay a lot more for ammunition. And I picked up our gun. Um, and my husband, I called him when I was close to the front of the line. He came and picked me up. But it was insane. And one of the things that was concerning me slash was interesting to me is a lot of the people I was kind of like I wasn't really eavesdropping we're all kind of close to each other it's not like they were hiding their conversation but I was listening to a lot of people's conversations and a lot of people there were first time gun buyers and a lot of people there were very inexperienced um really had not used any guns they were asking like advice like what do I get I just want a self-protection gun and it shows you at the end of the day, when people feel like there's civil unrest or any kind of unrest or just uncertainty in our economy or in our world, the first place we go in our mind, or the first place many of us go in our mind, is how will I protect myself and my own and my people and my property? And that's with a gun. I'm sorry, but bronze isn't going to get you very far if somebody wants to break into your home yeah, there, you're not going to get very far by trying to just physically defend yourself <laughs> with swinging punches, okay? Especially if you're a woman or a single mom or, or anything like that. But the truth is, is the line was crazy hard, long. There were a lot of newbies buying. Something that does kind of concern me is um, I do wonder, these, these people who have never had any experience with guns before, I do wonder if they're going to be putting themselves at more risk or in, in more of harm's way by purchasing, purchasing a gun that they're not familiar with and don't have an ability to practice with, or maybe they don't have someone to show them. Um, how to take care of their gun or handle it properly, especially if they have kids in the household. I have these questions going through my mind and I'm thinking, okay, but then on the other hand, who am I to, to say, no, you shouldn't if you're not familiar with guns or you don't, um, you, you don't have the time or space or, or someone to help you learn how to, to handle your gun. Because, you know, just recently in Philadelphia and other places, they, Philadelphia outright announced that they were closing their courts until at least April 1st, probably longer. Um, but for right now, until April 1st, and they've done it to limit the spread of coronavirus. And the police commissioner um, he notified commanders Tuesday that the police will be delaying arrests for nonviolent crimes, including drug offenses, theft, and prostitution. Now, I care less about drug offenses and prostitution, but theft, theft, you're not, you're going to be laying prosecution and delaying your arrests for theft. So now if you see somebody breaking into your car or somebody breaks into your home to steal from you, because now we've got all these people out of work who are potentially desperate or just bored. And maybe they theft is their way of life already, but now they have this extra time on their hand and their hands. And they're in a place now where the police and their Philadelphia state is telling them, oh, by the way, we're not going to prosecute or you or arrest you for theft right now. I, as a homeowner, or even just as an individual, I don't care if I'm a homeowner or not, as, as a person who has personal property, whether that's your car or your home or where you rent, which is where you live, I'm concerned. 
And you should too, especially if you're living in a place like Philadelphia where they're telling you outright. It's one thing that I think to to maybe tell within your your area and your officers, hey, we're not going to prosecute these as hardcore maybe, but to outright announce that you're basically announcing to the criminals, by the way, now is your time. And then all the citizens are like, uh, uh excuse me? That's concerning. And the NRA said it perfectly in a statement. They said, quote, our nation has seen an uptick in firearm and ammunition sales whenever people feel threatened. Um, pause right there. Uh, another couple of times where ammunition has soared is uh, around 9-11 or Katrina. The thing is with 9-11 and Katrina, especially with Katrina, that's a more isolated area in, in one spot. We're talking about a nationwide, worldwide feeling of uncertainty that's going to make a lot of people purchase guns. So I probably was dumb to not expect a really long line in front of the, the gun shop, um, two hours plus. And, and so that was, that was naive on my end to not see that coming, but it shows you when people feel threatened, this is what they're going to go. So the NRA to continue that quote, we're seeing it now because Americans know that during times like these, First responder resources may be limited, and their safety is ultimately in their own hands. And that's the thing. We are blessed to live in a nation where we do have an armed force um, as capable as we do. We do have police officers, but at the end of the day, as citizens of America, as citizens of the world, our personal safety does fall at the end of the day into our own hands. And that is one of the glorious reasons why we have a Second Amendment outlined in our in our government saying that citizens have a right to protect themselves whether that's from other citizens or from our government whatever that is having a way to protect yourself is vital to freedom uh, whether that's personal freedom and not being not being robbed or whether that's freedom from an oppressive government now thankfully um thankfully this will hopefully be a short-term insecure time for the american people specifically and we'll go back to feeling a little bit more like we can maybe rely a little bit more on our police officers but right now I can definitely see why gun sales have astronomically skyrocketed in the last week or so. So um, a little bit about um, how many of you are social distancing. I kind of took a poll because I've taken a couple polls. I took one two weeks ago via a post and most of you were very nonchalant, at least those of you who are active on Instagram and comment. Thank you, by the way, for those of you who are so active in my polls, both in posts and in my stories. It's super awesome. and It's awesome way to engage with y'all. But I took a post, a poll kind of about two weeks ago asking people how seriously they were taking this and if they were going into quarantine or preparing. Most of y'all were basically like, no, nah, this is a government conspiracy theory, not changing anything about my life. That was the main answer. This week, a few days ago, I took another poll. Answers have changed quite a bit. Your guys's your guys's tune has changed significantly. I posted asking how many people were taking this. So one, I asked you to give me a number between one and five. One is not at all living normally. Um, two is being more cautious, but still going out. Three is going out as needed, mostly working from home, still seeing friends and family. Four is very limited, only going out when unavoidable, careful contact with people. And five is full lockdown, no one in or out. Now, the answers are very, there's a lot, a lot of y'all replied to that. I mean, if I can, if I can kind of show you, um, they just, I'm like scrolling and scrolling and there's so many answers, but to kind of give you an idea, if you were curious about where most of our conservative, conservative babes tribe is kind of holding up, it's most of you are about a four. Most of you are four, leaning five, four, um, maybe some, a few of you are like three and a half, um, very, very, very few three, excuse me, twos, and only like a few ones. Most of y'all have been taking this seriously, maybe even not even because you wanted to, but because your state is demanding that you take it seriously. We're seeing lockdowns in multiple states now, a lot of closures, a lot of disruptions in the life, but most of y'all are fours, um, three and a half are fours, and then a few fives or fours leaning five. Um, a few of you who have had it lighter have explained like, hey, you know, I work as a veterinarian or I work in the military, by the way, God bless you and thank you for your service. For those of you who are, you know, having to leave your family still and be part of the military, is, I mean, we, we're honored for your service. Um, but most of y'all are about a four. So that's kind of where we're at as a tribe and I think even just as a country. 
Now, let's talk about, um, I might be caring a little bit about your social distancing and wondering where you're at there. New York City wants to know how you're handling your sex life. Specifically, they're going to give you instructions if you live in New York City, and I'm sure that they would love, love to see this, um, you know, recommended in other states as well. But they're going to tell you, and they're going to get quite graphic this week, this weekend specifically, about how you should have sex during coronavirus. They put out a memo saying that um, it's not always to love the one you're with when you're self-isolating. Now, what I thought was interesting is um, they basically said your best bet is to take matters into your own hands. Very graphically recommending masturbation, which I thought was interesting. They even specifically said to go online to look more towards like pornography or online chat rooms, which I thought was destructive. You know my feelings about pornography. I've talked about it in episodes Porn Kills Love, or I think it's Pornography Kills Love and No Porn November. We've already talked about how pornography is a public health crisis. Don't add a public health crisis, New York City. Don't recommend a harmful, addictive, crack cocaine-like substance that acts on your brain to an already stressful situation. That's not going to help things, first of all. But they very they, they recommended masturbation, which I thought was um, interesting to have the state so specifically tell their citizens what to do. Um, then they're also, they went on to be more specific and say, quote, the next safest partner is someone you live with. Having close contact, including sex, with a small circle of people helps prevent spreading COVID-19. Okay, let's just pause right there. Within a small circle of people, uh, it's not healthy to have sex, period. Even outside of coronavirus, to have sex with a small circle of people, whether it's the same time or separate. I don't care how you want to take that. You should be having sex with one person, the person you're married to. Because take, take coronavirus out of the picture. Come on, sexually transmitted diseases that will change your life, will affect your fertility, will affect your, your, your chances to have children. Will, I mean, there are so many longstanding consequences to having sex with multiple people. And then we have New York City telling us, have sex within a small circle of people, as if you can't hold out for 14 days. Come on. And that's, I think, my main point in bringing this up is, is there, they went on to talk about how you shouldn't have group sex and how um, you shouldn't do like online hookups just for a while. And they're being all tender towards people's stuff. And they're saying you should do video dates and sexting and chat rooms and, and all kinds of stuff like that. But the truth is, at the end of the day, it just points to a culture that is self-obsessed with self-pleasure. If we're in a situation, let's just, even if you don't believe in coronavirus being serious, let's just take, for instance, New York City's stance on this, which is, this is very serious. This seems to be so seriously, take it so seriously that we're shutting down our economy in part for this. This is so serious, but we're going to tell you, we understand you have to have sex. Even if we're just saying, just, just put yourself in isolation for 14 days, but we understand it's so important that we're going to give you guidelines outside of that and just say, we'll have sex with with a small circle, a smaller circle of people. I mean, just don't have orgies right now, but you know, later it's okay. No, come on. First of all, it's morally reprehensible. It has long-term negative health effects in many ways. And then on top of that, come on, seriously, you're going to tell people that we, that it, it's okay. We understand sex is that important. No, come on, come on. If you're single and you're not married, and maybe you live a looser lifestyle and you don't believe that sex is for within marriage only, which is the safest and I believe only way to engage in sexual activity. But outside of that, come on, is sex so important? You can't put a hold on your selfish bodily instincts for 14 days to go into quarantine for what the state is calling very, very important. I mean, come on. We're so, so obsessed with self, self-care and, and self-fulfilling our whims that we can't pause for 14 days. Ridiculous. New York, come on, come on. Now, now if you wanna know my baby making tips, my sex tips for coronavirus is don't have sex with anybody except your husband or wife. Um, and that's about it. Yep, mm-hmm. 
And if you're not ready to have a child right this minute, I recommend natural family planning or condoms or anything that doesn't cause an abortion within your body, an early abortion like Plan B or even the morning after pill, or excuse me, that's the same thing, or um, birth control or even some IUDs. I mean, there's, I've talked about this and you can look at my birth control episode. A lot of birth controls cause early abortion. So we're going to continue on, but before I continue on, please remember to like this video or podcast, wherever you're listening or watching on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever it is, share it with a friend who wants some interesting coronavirus news and updates about what's going on and how coronavirus is affecting our culture. And also don't forget to subscribe and leave a good review. That's how this ranks. Okay. Come on. We got nothing better to do. You're quarantined. You're eating all your snacks. Watch my podcast or listen to my podcast while you're making delicious food and share with a friend. Don't forget to leave a good review. All right. Now, Speaking of children and baby making, I think they're probably, and I've seen all kinds of memes about this, and I've shared them on Instagram. If you've been watching my story, I've been sharing a lot of coronavirus memes just to lighten the day, but I do think there's going to be a baby boom. There's going to be a huge baby boom in about nine months, but more than that, there's also potentially going to be an abortion boom, and that concerns me a bit. Now, I have seen something, some, some memes and, and things circling like, coronavirus is shutting down Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics for a while, um, which is not entirely true. It's shutting down some. Planned Parenthood's now been asked to shut down for two weeks, um, but that's not all abortion clinics, guys. Just want to remind you, abortion clinics still are open, and these pregnancy resource centers still need to be supported, so find out how you can support them, whether that's monetarily or sending diapers or toilet paper. Moms still need our help, so please be involved. That aside, I've seen clinics or, 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 or memes saying like, oh, well, if if all coronavirus does is close down Planned Parenthood for a while, then it'll be saving more lives than it kills. Okay, guys, I get what you're trying to say. You're saying it's closing down death clinics. Yes, you know how I feel about Planned Parenthood, but no, it's not necessarily saving those lives. It might be delaying when they're killed, when these babies are being aborted, but it's not necessarily saving their lives. It's not like, oh, your abortion you know, appointment got canceled, it's never happening. That's not necessarily the case. We know that is if we think about it logically. Now, we need to more than ever in the pro-life movement buckle down and talk about abortion because the same way we're going to see a baby boom hardcore in nine to 10 months, we're also potentially going to see a massive abortion boom. And that is going to be tragic. We're talking about a lot of human life here. Now, abortion in Ohio um, thankfully, the governor has taken a stance. The American healthcare system has requested um, to ready itself um, for an onslaught of coronavirus victims. They've started to shut down elective procedures, um, such as you know non-necessary surgeries and anything that can be delayed a while, so we can just prepare and clear the way for coronavirus. Correct. So the governor at the time in um, in Ohio this last week has called for abortion services, asking Planned Parenthood and other abortion providers to cease conducting in-office procedures and to donate personal protective equipment like masks and gloves to healthcare providers on the front lines of the coronavirus. Outbreak, outbreak, which I think is great, not just because that um, even, even from, I believe, from a, an abortion-minded perspective, abortion is not the, the primary thing we should be focusing on right now and sending resources towards, but even just as a human life perspective, any excuse to shut down these disgusting slaughter mills is a good idea especially because I hope it hurts their bottom line. I hope that some of them can't recover from it. We've talked a lot about how some businesses, they can't survive for a month and that they'll, they'll have to close down. Now, as tragic as that is, and I don't want to see that happen, I would be okay with that happening to abortion clinics, truly. No, no, I am not sorry at all to say that um, I would be really thrilled if a lot of abortion clinics were shut down over this. Now, the decision from the national, this decision has left the National Abortion Federation seeing red. They are outraged. They are furious. They put in a statement, quote, abortion is provided for almost one in five pregnancies in the United States as part of a continuum of pregnancy care. This is not pregnancy care. This is ending pregnancy. It's ending a life. So this is not pregnancy care, but continuing in their statement, it's an essential health service. An individual and a family decide to end a pregnancy for a complex 
constellation of reasons that include the impact of pregnancy and birth on their health, ability to work, and strained economic circumstances. These are conditions that do not go away and are likely heightened in a pandemic conditions. Denying or deferring abortion care places an immediate burden on patients, their families, and the healthcare system and can have profound and lasting consequences. Profound and lasting consequences, huh? Like, I don't know, maybe the woman changes her mind because she has a minute to think about it. Maybe she decides to not kill her child. Profound and lasting consequences is what happens when a woman decides to go to your death clinic, to go to your death care place. It's not health care because you're ending a human life. Abortion is not a, or being pregnant is not a sickness. It's a phase of life, a phase of new life. Um, Profound and lasting consequences is what happens when you, when you choose to kill your unborn child. So don't tell me about profound and lasting consequences. Having a woman wait longer and maybe think about this decision. And for those who might be going in for late-term abortions, what about some of the babies it will save because they give birth before they can go get an abortion because they were, they were planning on having like in a New York abortion facility. What if they were planning on having an abortion at nine months pregnant. What if they give birth to that child and say, what if this saves lives? Profound and lasting consequences? Really abortion federation? Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with these consequences. I'm okay with taking the risk that maybe some women will choose life given the time to think about this longer. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of elective surgeries being cut, okay, so I had to look up whether or not saying queer was like super offensive or not which like I know I'm not in here to like please everybody or whatever but like I'm not going out of my way to hurt people's feelings either but I thought it was funny um the queers in quarantine but that is actually lending me to talk about transgender surgeries that's another one of the surgeries that's been cut as non-necessary which is making leftists super angry which doesn't make sense to me why would you intentionally want to go get a transgender a surgery, a gender altering surgery during this time, you're going to be in recovery while coronavirus hits around you. You're going to go to a hospital where sick people are already and a very contagious disease is people are going there because they have a very contagious disease and you want to get, you want to be there on purpose. I don't, anyways, it seems like a no brainer to me that if you can delay your surgery for anything that you should, but leftists are crazy upset. I um, was reading recently um, from Vice, they were talking about how um, this, quote, this underscores a common experience among trans people seeking medical care or surgery. Research has suggested that gender-affirming surgery in particular has a notable and long-term impact on mental health. Yeah, uh-huh, we know Vice. It can sometimes cause their depression and anxiety and mental health problems is probably out of control and be really bad for them. Also, it's causing, causing in many cases, irreversible physical damage or, and, and um, chemical damage to their bodies. So yeah, it does have a long-term effect on mental health. But continuing with their quote, far too often trans people already wait for longer than is safe or healthy for this care, Vice reports. Further delays can be dangerous and even life-threatening. Really, Vice? Really? It's dangerous and life threatening to not come some some cut some guy's penis off to try and make him feel like it's a vagina. Really, it's somehow life threatening and dangerous to not have a lady's <laughs> a lady's breasts removed so that she can feel more like a man. You're gonna tell me that's more dangerous and life threatening than somebody who's elderly or pregnant or has asthma or an autoimmune disorder and is going in for care from coronavirus, give me a break. Go, go cry yourself a bucket of tears in your, in your social isolation, self-quarantine. I don't care. And most, I think most of the common sense world doesn't care either. Don't even. People are having to delay their hip surgeries, which quite frankly sounds a lot more painful to delay that than having your wiener chopped off, okay? You're gonna survive just fine, okay? Make room for the people who are actually sick and really can't wait. You can wait on your body mutilation. You'll be just fine, okay? And you know what? Your psychological problems are real. I'm not saying that those aren't real. They are very real. But chopping off body parts or adding other body parts is not going to fix it for you. Newsflash. 
All right. Now, one last thing that I want to mention before we end this episode is um, I thought this was really funny. A police department in Oregon had to urge people that if they're running or have run out of toilet paper, that they're not supposed to call 911. So this is a public service announcement for everyone, including those in Oregon who are apparently struggling with this. If you run out of toilet paper, do not call 911. It is an emergency and the police cannot help you as the Oregon Police Department had to tell everyone. Now, the post was hilarious and they uh, cited a whole bunch of, of things that have been used historically for wiping your butt. And I listed a few of these in my last episode. You'll have, you'll have probably listened to last week's episode. I talked about um, popular conspiracy theories that I'd heard. And I also talked about ways to wipe your butt if you run out of, out of tissue paper. Now, my favorite is to take unmatched socks, cut them up, use those, and then bleach them when you're done in your washer. That seems to make the most sense to me. But historically, according to the Oregon Police Department, seamen have used old rope. Anchor lines soaked in salt water. Ancient Romans used a sea sponge on a stick, also soaked in salt water. Um, they, and then they specifically said, we're a coastal town. We have an abundance of salt water available. Seashells were also used. All of those sound uncomfortable. That's why I like my sock idea better. Um, many people, Mayans, used corn cobs. Colonial Americans used the core of the cob. Um, farmers used corn cobs, but also they used pages from the farmer's almanac. You can use... Sears Roebuck is what they're saying in, in, in past times. Um, and then they say, you know, today in modern world, there's grocery store receipts, newspapers, cloth, rags, lace, cotton balls, the um, empty toilet paper roll sitting on the holder right now. Plus there are a variety of leaves you can safely use. Don't use just any leaves. This is my announcement personally. You need to research which leaves can be used. I don't want you getting a rash and then having to go to the hospital and then catch coronavirus because you ran out of toilet paper. But I thought that was funny. thought I'd share with you, give you a laugh. Don't call 911 if you ran out of toilet paper, okay? All right, now, uh, before I hop over to Good in the World, I told you I'd share a big announcement and I'm really excited about this one. I think I'm gonna do an episode all about this journey and um, yeah, all the fun stuff. But basically, the announcement is my husband and I are so, so, so pleased and so announced, excuse me, so excited to announce that we're expecting, um, we're expecting baby steel number two, but it'll be the first baby we get to meet Earthside, obviously, um, if you've been following along. I did a podcast episode on miscarriage in the past, but we suffered a miscarriage in 2019. We lost our first baby at almost 11 weeks, which broke our hearts and really opened my eyes to the world of miscarriage. And that just kind of changed my entire view. So you can check out that episode. I believe I titled it personal. Um, if you want to listen to that, hear my um, miscarriage insights. But that aside, we are really, really excited for baby steel. Um, he or she is coming due in August, so we're very, very excited. We just feel very, very blessed. God has been very good to us. Um, you know, we we had some health challenges along the way trying to get pregnant a second time, but we just feel very blessed to have made it this far along. As of the recording of this episode, I am almost 18 weeks pregnant, um, so that has been fun. Morning sickness is alive and well, unfortunately. I keep being told by people that it should be ending, you know, should have ended around 12 weeks. It is not. We're about 18 weeks and I still throw up every single day. And, you know, if you've wondered why in the past some of my podcast episodes have been a little on the late side or recorded a little later or re produced and, and put out later, it's usually because the day I was supposed to record, I probably threw up five times and was just not physically up to recording. And so I had to record the next day in a hurry or in the evening or something. Um, but thank you for being patient with me. It's been a wild ride. And while pregnancy is definitely a sacrifice, it is so worth it. And we are blessed every day. Every time I throw up, I just thank God that I'm still pregnant and that I get the honor of throwing up and feeling miserable half the time because I get to have this baby and I get to bring this baby in the world, God willing. So we're very, very excited. Um, go ahead and comment, um, especially if you're watching on YouTube. Watch If you're watching on YouTube, comment if you think it's a boy or a girl. And um, we'll take a little poll and see what y'all think. Boy or girl, let me know. Or else um, I'll probably make a poll on Instagram. You can comment boy or girl. Maybe we'll do like some kind of giveaway or something. But um, we're just really excited. We're really blessed. We're really happy. That's kind of like, I feel like that's the good in the world for me, for us personally. We're just really, really thrilled. 
Um, but for good in the world, for the rest of the world, maybe, y'all, um, we'll share a little story. Something that I thought was really touching is, first of all, I usually have to look pretty hard for a good, good in the world story to share with you, but I'm telling you, it has been so heart, just beautiful and very heart lifting for me. It's been so easy to find good in the world stories since coronavirus has really kind of hit because it's, well, these kind of situations can bring out the worst in people. It can also bring out the best in people. And that's one thing that I'm seeing is a lot of really amazing stories. It's hard to pick. The one I chose for this week to share with you is in Houston, Texas, a couple left a $9,400 tip at a restaurant. Um, quote, Irma Southwest Restaurant in Houston, Texas, says a person came in Monday after Harris County announced a mandatory shutdown of bars and nightclubs, according to CBS 17. That's when restaurant employees say a customer left them a $9,400 tip. The couple left a note on the receipt that read, hold tip to pay you guys over the next few weeks. That's beautiful. Truly, truly beautiful. I think as Christians, um, I think I shared this last week too, as Christians now more than ever is our time to step forward. Remember, we are the body of Christ. We are the hands and the feet and the mouth, mouthpieces of Christ. And we've got to do our best to step up our game. I mean, we really should be stepping up our game every day, whether there's a crisis or not. But now more than ever, when people are scared and they have anxiety and they don't know where to turn, now is our time to step forward and be hands and feet and mouth of God, mouth of Christ, and show that show that goodness where we can. And maybe that's not going to be you can give away almost $10,000. Maybe you can't do that. Um, goodness knows, I don't think I could do that. Um, this is not within my financial capacity, but you and I can buy an extra carton of eggs or an extra gallon of milk and we can deliver it to a family with like a lot of kids or an elderly couple. We can do something small that might seem little to us, but maybe means the world to them. Even maybe it's not even just that gallon of milk or that carton of eggs, but maybe it's just knowing that somebody cares and that there's a community. So I would encourage you to be the good in the world and also just throwing this out there if you have experienced an amazing act of good in your life someone has been kind to you good to you or you've witnessed someone else maybe a loved one be kind and show kindness to others please 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 tell me your story message me on instagram or send me an email conservativebabes at gmail.com tell me your stories i want to share your stories whether that's on instagram or twitter or facebook or here on the podcast, I want to share these stories of good because this is what makes us a community. This is what makes us the body of Christ. Not sharing the stories, but acting on them. And I think it's encouraging to others to share those stories. So send me those stories of good acts in the world. Just title in your email, good in the world, or at the top of your Instagram message so I can see it right away, good in the world. And I will be sure to, to, to look at those and see what I can do to share those. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless the church. God bless America and God bless the world. This is Deconstructing the Culture. I am your host, Alisa Steele. Hey there. So you're at the end of the podcast and I'm going to ask you to please, if you haven't already, subscribe and leave a review. And if you've already done those two things and you're like, Alisa, I hear you say that every week and I've already done that. What else do you want me to do? This is the time I would like to tell you what else I'd like you to do. No, I'm being serious though. Please share this with a friend, with a like-minded friend, or maybe a friend who doesn't know much about the pro-life movement or doesn't know much about the conservative movement. Maybe as an introduction, maybe as someone who is a tried and true conservative who you just feel like our personalities might resonate. Who knows? But I'm asking you to please take that next step and go ahead and share this with a friend or two or a dozen. I don't care. Actually, maybe 30, you know? However you want. You be generous. You decide. All right. Thanks. Bye.